I'm Yoko, and welcome back to Galaxy Clan for Year 6. If you're new, I suggest checking out the playlist as this is part of a series. And the support for this series never ceases to blow my mind, and I'm thankful for all of you. Also, I was a bit creative with the liberties I took this year in regards to a current rogue drama going on. Because we did run into a lot of them. But with that said, let's start with the cats in Star Clan. And after five years of no elder deaths, this year came with a vengeance. I'm grouping these two up together because Ridge and Buzzard Daisy died due to their old age this year. Ridge died at 163 moons old, and Buzzard Daisy died at 162 moons old. Just a few moons after she died, because he was younger than her. And honestly, good for them, that's pretty long. And that also answers the question of if Ridge or Buzzard Daisy would die first. Um, I am both sad they are gone, but kind of happy that they are together again and it wasn't that long of a wait. Buzzard Daisy was pretty sad during the very few moons without Ridge around. Also, I'm going to mention something that I never got around to saying about Buzzard Daisy. Ever since he joined the clan, I had a theory that he might have been Ravenspot and Cinderpetal's dad. Um, and I actually modeled his original design off of Cinderpetal, but with different colors. I mean, they're from a kitten mill, and I mentioned most of the cats from there were dumped, so it's entirely possible. That being said, I kind of scrapped that and then ignored it for a bit, but something this year brought that theory back to my mind, and I'll get into it later. Um, I don't think he ever knew he was their dad if he is, but let me know what you guys think of that, especially considering something later. Um, either way, I'm going to miss these spunky elders. Ridge and Buzzard Daisy were just refusing to retire, running out in the wild, still hunting. I still think they had good personalities, even if they were stuck in the Elder's Den for most of it. And I'm gonna miss them. But we're not done talking about Elders in Star Clan because Mint Fur has also passed away. She was the youngest of the Elders at 130 moons old, but I'm thinking she might have had an underlying condition that cats can't explain or fix. She had been visiting the Medicine Cat Den a few times before she passed, and Lake Tree seemed a little stressed when she was visiting. Perhaps this underlying condition has been what drew her to the comfort of the clan in the first place, and she had it before she even joined. Eventually, she decided that living alone was getting hard. That being said, she never really did too much in the clan. As a warrior, her most notable moment had been when she got that torn ear from rogues. Honestly, it's a shame because I liked her design and I thought it was cute. But yeah, not too much to say. And the last new cat in Star Clan actually died before her. But I saved her for the end because I know this is gonna hurt. Whiskerheart is sadly the last new cat in Star Clan. She died at 138 moons old and she was straight up murdered. This girl can't catch a break, I swear. Her life was so sad from like beginning to end. Um, I'll get more into how it escalated to this as the video goes on, but I'll say right now she was killed when rogues invaded and attacked the camp. A lot of senior warriors had been gone and the attack was very calculated. They went right for those that they thought were weak, such as the medicine cat den, the nursery, and the elder's den. Also, there's a lot of bonus pictures this year that realistically they should have blood, but I kept it out of almost all of them for convenience of not interrupting with a warning like eight times in the video. But back to Whiskerheart. I like to think she died a hero protecting Odd, Bat, and Mintfur at the time. She used her great fighter skill one last time, but sadly lost her life in the process, being killed by a rogue named Beetle. And with that, we lost another founder of Galaxy Clan. Hopefully Whiskerheart can finally relax for real this time, but it's so sad to see her go, especially since it was this way and not just relaxing and eventually of old age. It's, it's just really sad. And before we get into the clan, I made a new random clan on another file to get a visual idea of our rogue enemies. I picked all the adults and disregarded their personalities they had in-game. These are violent rogues. I then ignored half of their name and added a few scars for visual interest, and that was how I made the group. I don't have a speed paint for this because these were actually just going to be design references for bonus pictures, but I'm going to put them on screen for a bit while I talk about the group because I kind of like how the drawings came out and most of them I didn't use the whole design in most of the pictures. You'll be able to see the names as they go on screen, but it's really not that important. You might just recognize the name later when you hear me saying so-and-so hurt so-and-so. But I'll just talk about the group in general. I made some lore of how they work based on their actions. They are violent and heartless, and if you join them, there's no leaving with a pulse. Crossing them means they are determined to hunt you down for revenge. 
They don't care much for kids or elders. You get too old and they kick you out. They sneer at any queens for being dumb enough to have litters and they are chased out as well. They also look down on kitty pets, thinking they're weak. I randomized which cats were involved in specific events this year, one of which being Whiskerheart's killer I mentioned earlier. And all the rogues were involved in the raid on the clan, and yeah, here's the rogues. I'll get more into their actions and definite connection to Freckle Spot as we go through. Which, speaking of, I'm actually going to go over the Freckle Spot situation now, as it will make the video easier. She is now 107 moons old, and I have decided that she used to be part of this rogue group, but she snuck away when she first found out she was having kits. The rogues never knew she was expecting in the first place, and saw this as an act of betrayal in general, and they tracked her down. That being said, she didn't run away from them to protect her kits, but for the more selfish reasons of not wanting to face her group's sneers... Freckle Spot was also getting up in age, and she knew it was a matter of time until the rogues would see her as disposable. She never really seemed to be the nicest to her kits in-game, and in general, she seemed to mostly ignore them. The rogues started attacking to try to get to her, but she held her tongue and didn't tell the clan. After things started getting really bad, she snuck out to meet the rogues, providing a reason not to immediately kill her. She sweet-talked her way into saying she had a plan that required kits where she gained shelter in the clan as a helpless queen making them underestimate her skills. However, she now knows the clan's patterns, locations, and weak spots now. She ensured them that she does not care about her kits, who at this point were now new warriors, and convinced them that they would be very easy to take down the camp and steal the land during the harsh leaf bear for even more prey. This led to the camp invasion while she knew most of the warriors were gone. Her betrayal was revealed after she did a really bad thing during that and after being attacked by a certain cat. I'm being vague, but we'll get into this later. She was then chased off and exiled, the event leaving the current scar that's on her shoulder. Both the clan and the rogues aren't happy with her, and she's on the run. Also, since this is an older version of the game, I can't actually exile her, so she's technically in the clan, so I just send her on solo patrols and see how long she survives. I don't skip any event she runs into, so if she ends up running into a dog, that's that's what she has to deal with. There's more details to her, but we'll get to them as the video goes on. But now let's finally go into the clan, starting with Burdock Star. She is 123 moons old, so in-game she has an Elder Sprite and is a loaf. I actually wanted to add her lives on the screen, but I forgot this year, so I'll say she now has 8 lives instead of 9. Burdock Star was actually murdered this year, and like I said, since this is an older version, if she dies in-game, I'm just resetting the moon so she's not permanently dead until she's lost all her lives. But when I reset the moon, that's when Whiskerheart was murdered. And I kept that as canon after looking at everyone's status and realizing it painted a very interesting and clear picture of what exactly happened that day, like lore-wise. But before all of that happened, earlier in the year, Burdock Star had been stressed with all the rogue attacks. They fight dirty and her warriors have been badly hurt by them. Luckily, up until the day they attacked the camp, her warriors hadn't lost any lives to them, perhaps due to them having perhaps due to her having them practice defensive moves in a preventative measure against Creek Clan. Burdock Star had also taken it upon herself to train one of Frecklespot's sons herself, wanting to keep an eye on him. I'll get more into him later, but she couldn't bring herself to train the one that looked like Stoneleaf, so she ended up taking Bubble Kit. During the attack on the camp, she was actually caught off guard while on patrol with Frecklespot who was the one to murder her. Frecklespot didn't believe she had nine lives and was working with the rogues. Her part of the plan was to deal with the leader while they were alone. Another cat showed up to help, however, and after Burdock Star's revival, Frecklespot was surprised enough to be chased away. And Burdock Star yelled at her that she was not welcome back. Burdock Star is doing her best making her clan strong and is very cautious to outsiders right now, with a very few exceptions. Luckily, when Frecklespot left, the rogues seemed to back off, busy chasing revenge. Burdock Star is a bit protective of Frecklespot's kits and is worried about their futures. And I kind of like the general dynamic of Burdock Star being a mom that will protect her kits no matter what, and Frecklespot being kind of a dismissive, not very good mom that does not care. I, I like that dynamic lore-wise. <laughs> Now on to our deputy, Ravenspot, who is 76 moons old, and his mate, Aspen Lily, who is 73 moons old. They are doing much better this year. Ignoring the rogue drama for now, early in the year, Ravenspot and Aspen Lily consulted with Burdock Star about their want of finding a surrogate, 
and she gave them permission to get a cat outside the clan to help. They ended up finding a loner who lived outside the clan and had been a kitty pet in the past, and she had litters before that she didn't get to keep, so she was used to this. So she said she would help as long as she got shelter during her vulnerable moons, which was granted. With all that said, Raven and Aspen now have a new litter. The loner left them in the nursery under Aspen Lily's care after they were weaned. The two Toms are very protective of their litter, which leads into the rogue attack. Ravenspot was out of camp patrolling at the time, but Aspen Lily fought bravely defending the nursery where his five moon old kits at the time were, along with another queen's one, one moon old litter. Together with the queen, they chased off the rogue Stoat and Wren, who underestimated them. Ravenspot is very proud of his mate and wishes he was there as well, but Frecklespot made sure he was one of the warriors that were out of camp before calling the attack, as he is a fierce, strong warrior as well as the deputy. He was actually probably another assassination target if things went more according to plan. But their free children are now apprentices, and they are very proud of them. So I'm very happy to see these two doing a lot better this year. On to our medicine cat, Lake Tree. She is now 58 moons old, and last video I made her like a year younger than she was supposed to be by accident, so oops. She has been very busy this year with all the injuries from rogues, but she has become more confident in her skills. It was too late to save Whiskerheart by the end of the battle, but she saved everyone else from battle injuries, including the life of a very badly hurt apprentice and making sure the eyesight of another warrior was not completely lost after a run-in with rogues. During the moon of the rogue attack, I checked if anyone had the status of visiting the medicine cat den, and there was. I'll get into who that was later, but they helped protect her with the help of another cat. And after all of that drama, Lake Tree took one of Raven and Aspen's kits as an apprentice. He'll show up later. While Lake Tree was nervous to take on another one of their kits after Tawny's son, Ravenspot and Aspen Lily gave their full support when their son expressed interest. Lake Tree has been busy this year, and I think it helped keep her mind off things and everyone she lost, and just show how important she is to the clan. She also believes she understands the There Still Lives a Pale Hope prophecy now, and has finally shared it with Burdock Star, who had been unaware of it until the end of this year. She had wanted to wait until she could try to make sense of it herself before consulting her, but we'll get more into that later. Also, on the very last moon, she got an omen, so I'm concerned for next year, but let's get into our warriors now. First up is Blue Light, who is now 108 moons old, and he was attacked by rogues while on patrol with Potato Cloud earlier on the year. Unfortunately, Potato Cloud was busy with his own fight and unable to help when Spruce had gone for Blue Light. And this is the one blood warning for the video. If you don't want to see it, look away until I say it's gone. It's going up in 3, 2, 1. When I went to roll how bad his eye scar was, I took note that the rogues are violent and fight dirty. And he's a kitty pet and they do not like them. And he actually got almost the worst option for injury and he was almost completely blinded. And the picture is off the screen now. He lost sight in his right eye, but Lake Tree managed to save his left. He is very thankful for her work and was confined to the medicine cat den for a few moons. Blue Light is getting up in age and being unable to patrol for a bit while he still could made him pretty antsy. He hasn't done anything with his crush on Burdock Star, but both of them have been pretty busy this year dealing with different things. Again, I'm not sure if that will ever happen, but I'm pretty sure Blue Light doesn't expect anything either. And I think he's okay with that. I think he admires her strength and dedication to the clan. Blue Light is determined to defend his clan as long as he is able to and helps out wherever he can still, though he is a bit jumpy on his blind side now. Next up is a new face. Her name is Specklenose, and she is a daring 85-moon-old she-cat. She joined right after the rogue attack. And I was going to say Burdock Star wouldn't invite anyone new for a bit, but when I time-skipped one of the generated events on screen was Aspen Lily invited her into the clan. So I'm saying this is the loner that was the surrogate, and after Frecklespot's betrayal, Aspen Lily was concerned with her being alone, since they may be searching for any possible revenge against the clans, and she was kind of a sitting duck. She joined the clan for safety in numbers. The kids who were apprentices at the time were happy to see her again. I imagine she feels a little awkward in the clan, but they're doing their best to welcome her in. That being said, she just joined the clan and she hasn't done much yet, but welcome to the clan, Specklenose. Next up is Cinderpetal, who is now 76 moons old. He is trying to live his best life right now, doing his best to live in the moment. He's been trying to be a part of his brother's kids' lives, especially for certain reasons I'll explain later. He regrets not spending enough time with their first litter. 
He was a little uneasy with the kit that looked like Stoneleaf at first, but he shook his head and pushed against the pain of his past. He went out of his way to share prey with him and try to make him feel more welcome. Cinderpetal won't admit this, but that kid specifically combined with Ravenspot's kits make him think about the family he never got to have with Stoneleaf, and he's finding it hard not to see Frecklespot's kits as sons that he never had. He's kind of doing the everything is fine outwardly thing while he is slightly dying on the inside. He also very much so despises Frecklespot, but refuses to hunt her down. He's leaving that to the rogues, finding it would be a fitting end to her. Oh, speaking of, one of the moons before the battle, I actually sent everyone out on solo patrols, specifically looking for the prompt where they run into four bloodthirsty rogues. I skipped anything that had anything dangerous and was unrelated to rogues, but at that point in the year, the rogues hadn't killed anyone, and I'll be honest, I was looking for some drama. Cinderpetal was the only one to run into the prompt, and he actually managed to fight all four of them off on his own. So, yeah, he's doing great this year. A an absolute beast. I'm so proud of him, and I feel despite maturing a lot, he's still ready to run headfirst in the battles. But now he feels less pressured to prove himself in the clan, and feels the clan knows he is a strong cat now. Next up, I'll talk about Shrewpatch and her sister Hopwhisker together. They are both 52 moons old and have patched things up finally. Shrewpatch hasn't tried to instigate anything with Creek Clan with all the rogue drama going on, and she was able to break through Hopwhisker's wall of icy emotions, getting Hopwhisker to talk about her feelings and sharing her own as well. Hopwhisker had fallen in love with Twigclaw during the hard time of losing her brother soon after her father. He had helped her look to the future, and she wanted to live her best life in the moment to make her loved ones happy. Shrewpatch, on the other hand, had been upset, feeling she was being left behind in some way and was unable to face the future and was stuck in the past, constantly trying to avenge her brother. After Twigclaw's death, Hopwhisker had been bitter thinking about Shrewpatch's past thoughts in the relationship and only now actually let her patch things up. After getting all of this off their chest, the sisters understood each other a lot better. They've been sharing prey and going on patrols together. They also ran into rogues and Shrewpatch got a torn ear from Shrew. From Spruce, not true. <laughs> Hopwhisker was relieved it wasn't anything worse. Overall, they're doing pretty good, and Shrewpatch actually was thinking about kits at the very end of the year, so I wonder if there's anything going on with her or if she was just hanging out in the nursery that day. But yeah, next up is the 36 moon old Potato Cloud, and if you didn't see my community post, last video he joined the clan and changed his name from Potato to Cloudfur, which made a lot of people miss Potato. So I made a poll for a new name, and he is now Potato Cloud. And canon-wise, I'm retconning that he ever changed it to Cloudfur, and he chose Potato Cloud from the start. Anyway, as for this year, I mentioned earlier he ran into rogues and was there when Blue Light almost got blinded. He felt guilty for being unable to get to him in time, but Ottertail helped him calm down. I think- My cat just jumped on the desk I am recording on. I think while his personality is thoughtful, it's more of a nervous overthinking type of thinking, and he needs to calm down to actually express his thoughts. As for the love plot going on with Pale Path, I've been overanalyzing everything between all the potential ships, and on one of the early moons, he wanted to be alone while Pale Path was having a hard day. So I took that to mean Pale Path had confessed her crush, and he probably politely rejected her. He just hasn't been shown to have any romantic interest in her. I also think he knows that his best bud Ottertail had a crush on her and might have been rooting for him a bit. Or maybe Potato Cloud doesn't like girls. Or maybe he could also just be aromantic. We'll have to see if anything happens in the future with other cats. Potato Cloud also just became a mentor and he's a bit overwhelmed but honored Burdock Star thought he would be a good choice. He definitely has his paws full of her though. And next up is Pale Path and Emberfeather, who are both 26 moons old, and they actually became mates at the very last moon of this year. On that moon, Pale Path had been thinking about love, and Emberfeather was nervous. So I sent them on patrol together, and they had a cute training session, and during which I decided Emberfeather confessed his feelings, and Pale Path accepted them. This is almost half a year after Potato Cloud rejected her, so I'm sure she moved on by then. These two just got together, so they're at the awkward dating stage where Emberfeather is very nervous about messing things up. He also feels a little bad about his brother, but they already talked about this and how they'd have no hard feelings if one of them got to be Pale Path's mate. 
Beyond the love drama, Pale Path is still a rowdy girl ready to take on anything. I kind of see them as the buff girl for emo boyfriend. Emberfeather's strong too, it's just a funny image. Pale Path ran into rogues and got a scar on her eye. Luckily, it wasn't as bad as Blue Light and her eyesight is unharmed. She's also a little salty over being the only one from her age group who hasn't gotten an apprentice as Emberfeather actually got one this year. He got his neck scar protecting them from a fox on their first patrol. And technically, he got his ear scar from something else this year, but I'm choosing to say he got it while defending Lake Tree in the Medicine Cat Den during the rogue attack, since he was the one hanging out there on the clan page. However, on the same moon, his brother had the status that they were fighting. And I chose to take that literally as they were fighting together against the rogues instead of against each other. Which, speaking of, here's Otter Tail. He has never shown any dislike for his brother at any point, and lore-wise, it just wouldn't make sense that they would be fighting at the same time the rogues attacked. This was before he got together with Pale Path, so there wouldn't be any bad blood. And just in general, during the rogue attack, it would make no sense. I will say that they both probably wish they could protect the Elder's Den at the same time since their parents were in there, but they had a duty to protect the clan's one medicine cat. Ottertail's a little gloomy over Pale Path becoming mates with Emberfeather right now, but he wishes his brother well in the relationship and is trying to stay positive. He likes to tease his brother about stealing Pale Path if he messes up, but he doesn't mean it. Ottertail is currently busy training an apprentice of his own with Potato Clad. Ottertail is really happy to have been given the chance to train someone and is excited to prove himself as a mentor, especially after his brother did such a great job. Oh yeah, so the funniest thing in my opinion happened in this game. Uh, do you notice his little neck scar that he has now? He got that while fighting an otter, apparently. <laughs> Ottertail fought an otter and got a scar. I'm sorry, but that notification was hilarious and he continues to live up to the chaos. Not only do the brothers both have neck scars of various degrees, but he also has a matching torn ear that I honestly don't remember seeing appear and have nothing written down for it, so I'm saying he got that while defending Lake Tree as well. Now on to Freckle Spot's kit, starting with Bubble Spec, which is honestly a very cute name. I don't know if it's the most fitting, but it's cute. He is 15 moons old and has grown to be vengeful, which I would say is concerning, but it's honestly expected based on his life he's had so far, as well as the fact he was mentored by the vengeful leader Burdock Star. On their first patrol, Burdock Star had him practicing defensive moves close to the camp due to the rogues causing problems, which they kind of goofed around a bit and bonded. Unfortunately, you may notice he has a giant scar. So when I time skipped a moon, it said he got a scar in his neck from something on the new moon screen. Then on that same moon, he got another scar from a rogue, which he was only eight moons old at that time, and based on this happening on the same moon, I think canonically it makes the most sense if he wandered off on his own and got ambushed by the rogue lightning, and I combined the scars to have it happen in the same event. It was almost a murder until Burdock Star found him and chased off his attacker. She then rushed him to Lake Tree for immediate attention. The care that Burdock Star and his brother showed him while he was healing really showed him the contrast of the neglect his mother had, and he grew kind of upset with her. He was even more upset after finding out his mom caused all of this, and he is very dedicated to the clan, declaring it his now true family. After everything, Burdock Star had finally told him and his brother about the story of Stoneleaf, and told them not to seek revenge by committing murder as it is against the warrior code, and she doesn't want to see them fall down the same path. She understands fighting for defense or to chase them off, but she would hate to see them become corrupted with blood on their paws. And I'm a little concerned that he might seek some stuff in the future, but we'll have to see. Next up is his brother, the Loyal Bright Mask, who is previously known as Pale Kit. Thank you for all the prefix suggestions. I had made a poll with the ones I liked the best, and Burdock Star renaming him to Bright Paw One. I like to think she did so hoping that he would have a bright future. She assigned his mentor to be Emberfeather, and I think she did that due to Emberfeather being only three moons old at the time of Stoneleaf's death, and he was able to train Brightpaw without the image of his brother unconsciously clouding his vision as much as, like, the other warriors. After seeing Emberfeather defend him from a fox on their first patrol to the point of getting injured, Brightpaw was taken aback with how much he cared, and he gained a strong respect for the Tom. Throughout the rogue attacks, he watched and was proud of how the clan stuck together and helped each other. Back when he was a kit, he thought he saw a Star Clan cat in his dreams that looked a lot like him. 
The cat told him to be careful and not to trust his mother. Brightpaw was upset at how little Frecklespot seemed to care about his brother when he almost died, and with the warning from his kit days in his mind, he distanced himself. Now, two things happened on the same moon of the rogue attack. First, Stoneleaf was walking in Brightmask's dreams. Second, Brightmask had the status, is fighting with Frecklespot. So I took that as Stoneleaf's spirit showed up during the attack and told him to go save Burdock Star, who at that point Frecklespot had took a life from. Perhaps combining their strength in some way, he chased off his mom, giving her that scar on her shoulder. I imagine Stoneleaf probably wanted to do even more damage, and after Brightmask proved his loyalty and chased off his mom, Lake Tree saw him as the prophecy cat most likely and confided in Burdock Star. After Brightmask heard Stoneleaf's story from her, he tracked down Stoneleaf again in the dark forest while he was dreaming, and Stoneleaf told him these woods are not meant for him, and he chased him away. Also, side note, Stoneleaf has been sharpening his claws a lot, and I think he is waiting for Frecklespot's arrival in the dark forest, where he might be planning to get his own revenge more personally on her. And that was a lot, but we still have cats to get to, so let's go into the apprentice den and see Ravenspot and Aspen Lily's kits, who are now seven moons old. First up is the nervous Cinderpaw. Now, I mentioned I would rename kits with the same name as living cats, but he is staying this way because he has the same facial pattern as Cinderpetal, and this is one of Ravenspot's kits, which means he named one of his babies after his brother, and my heart is going to explode. Also, this is the other reason I brought up Buzzard Daisy potentially being Raisin Spot and Cinder Petal's dad, because he's mostly like a light gray, almost white color like him. Anyway, while he and his siblings were kids, he had been talking about wanting to get to know Squirrel Paw, which makes me think that Aspen Lily was telling them stories about her. He had also wished that they could spend more time with Hazel Runner, so obviously their parents had shared stories about his older brothers as well. I like to think despite their tragic fate, Cinderpaw was inspired by both Squirrelpaw and Tawny Sun to ask to be a medicine cat. And while Lake Tree was hesitant at first, she is doing her best to train him and they have a very cute little relationship. He's a bit nervous that he won't be good enough and also that he might end up reaching a bad fate, but he really wants to help other cats in the clan. Now on to his sisters, starting with the loving Fernpaw. Fernpaw is apprenticed to Ottertail, and on their first patrol, she managed to catch a mouse after they had gone over to hunting techniques for most of the day. Ottertail learning from Hot Whiskers' method of training basics first. This was extra impressive, seeing as this was Leaf Bear and Prey is scarce. Fernpaw is an absolute sweetheart, and I love her. She looks like a little mini raven spot, but I made her fluffier. And she's super cute. She's just become an apprentice right now, but... She can't wait to be a warrior, and she's been excited since she was a kit. She does her best to support both of her siblings, hanging out with Cinderpaw in the medicine cat den when things aren't busy, and trying to calm his nerves. I also imagine she's the type of apprentice to actually offer to go help the elders instead of being forced to. That being said, the elders are odd and bat, so I imagine they're pretty entertaining. But yeah, she's adorable and I love her. Last up in the den is her sister, Patchpaw, who is fierce and was apprenticed to Potato Cloud. And while showing her the borders on their first patrol, they ran into a bug clan patrol and she tried to antagonize them until Potato Cloud got her quiet and apologized saying this was her first patrol. The leader Heatherstar was in the patrol and luckily they are compassionate and understood the struggles of a rowdy apprentice. Potato Cloud is grateful she didn't do this at the Creek clan border instead. Side note, speaking of the other clans, I'm planning a smaller video where I briefly go over some of the more important people in them. Just cute little side thing. Patchpaw wants to be a tough warrior like her fierce deputy dad, Ravenspot, and her kind yet really strong dad, Aspen Lily, who protected them during the rogue attack. Fern Kit at the time had to hold her back from trying to join in the fight herself. Patchpaw is the type of apprentice that is itching to show off all her cool skills and chase off bad guys. She reminds me of a younger cinder petal. Though in her defense, she did basically grow up in a time of war when rogues were attacking them, so... Overall, I really love these three. Cinderpaw is a nervous wreck, Patchpaw is a reckless wildfire, and Fernpaw is there in the middle trying to keep them grounded. They're very cute. Now into the nursery with someone new. They joined the clan right before the big rogue attack, and immediately they looked kind of familiar to me. I don't want to keep randomly making cats related to each other due to having to keep track of a family tree, but I couldn't resist. 
So our new queen is Weed Leap, which that sure is a name. And she is 112 moons old and has the personality lonesome. She's pretty old to be having kids, but you know who else had kids at quite an old age? Odd. You know who Weed Leap looks pretty similar to? Odd. <laughs> I've decided that this is her little sister from another litter who liked her alone time, preferring to live a life of solitude with occasional visits. I think Odd had secretly been seeing her even as an elder, and when Weedleaf was expecting kits, she finally convinced her to come join the clan. While the clan was cautious of outsiders at the time, you can't stop Odd or predict anything she does. And canonically, it wasn't Odd who invited her, but I'm retconning that. Also, Weedleaf joined the clan on the 69th moon, which I can't not mention because funny number haha. And if she was a human, she would have a username that ends in 42069. You cannot convince me otherwise. Weedleaf has two sons, Mintkit and Oakkit. I would have renamed Mintkit due to Mint for existing, but she passed away now, and I think Mint is a cute prefix, so I'll keep it. I'm not sure if the odd family goofiness has rubbed off on the kits, but we'll see in the future. And speaking of odd, her and Bat are the only elders in the den now. Odd being 138 moons old and Bat being 131 moons old. Bat is pretty shaken up after the rogue attack where Whiskerheart died in front of him and after three of their denmates died this year of old age. He's having a bit of an existential crisis regarding his own mortality and the fact that both him and Odd are pretty old now. He's been rethinking his thoughts on Star Clan after hearing about Burdock Star actually reviving and thinking about how he saw Bur Buzzard Daisy in his dreams who I imagine honestly might have just done that to troll him. <laughs> he is a stressed old man right now. Luckily, who has Odd, who helps calm him down and is there to lighten the mood. Whatever happens, happens. She encourages him to relax and take in the sight of their kids being great warriors, playfully joking about sticking around at least long enough to meet their future grandkids, and encouraging him to tell stories to her sister's kids and Fernpaw, who visits often. Weedleaf also playfully teases Odd about the cat slaying equivalent of the great prince in shining armor that she fell in love with, to which Odd counters with something along the lines of, oh yeah, where's your prince? Um, I am very happy Odd and Bat survived the seeming purge of all the elders this year. It, it would have sucked to lose them too. And that's year six of Galaxy Clan. A lot of things happened this year and I'm excited to see the next one. I'm not sure if the rogues will stick around or leave after potentially dealing with Freckle Spot. We'll have to see how it goes. But there was a surprising amount of rogue-related injuries that happened that I didn't even have to make up for plot reasons. Like I said, I'm working on a shorter side video where I'll briefly go over the other free clans again with some important cats, like I did at the end of, I think, Year Free. I can't really do full videos on them since I do not take as informative of notes on them as I do Galaxy Clan. Think of them more as the other free clans from the first arc. Mostly a blob of cats that exist with a few standout characters. But with that said, thank you for watching. The support on the series always blows me away. If you haven't already, I'd appreciate if you could like, subscribe, and check out my socials linked below. My commissions are open if you'd like to support me that way. And with that said, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next week. Peace!